Hello everyone, I'm here with a new tutorial video where I'm going to show how you can procedurally generate a torus knot like this using the formula spline. But that's not it. I will also show you how to create custom user data to change the variables in the formula so that you can modify the torus knot and create different variations. This will require a bit of Expresso and three lines of Python code. It's easy and gives you more control. You can also apply the technique to other projects once you learn it. Create a new scene and let's get started. First, create a formula spline object. Now we have this default spline like a wave. It's generated based on these mathematical formulas that you see here. Changing these values will change the spline. Let's clear out all the fields. I will put some values for Tmax, Tmin, and samples that I got after some experiments. Here's the formula for the torus knot, which I got from the internet. You can see that we have three fields to put the formula. For x, we have r, which is the major radius, plus a smaller r, which is the minor radius, multiplied by cosine q times t, and the whole thing multiplied by cosine p times t. P and Q represent twists, turns for the torus knot, and T represents the time slash angle. For YT, it's the same thing, except in the end. We put sine instead of cosine. For Z of T, it's only sine Q times T. Let's apply these values and see what we get. Open parenthesis and put 4.0 for major radius, plus 2.0 for minor radius, times cos 7.0 times t. Close parenthesis and multiply by cos 6.0 times t. Copy the whole thing and paste it in the yt field. Change the last cos to sin. For z of t, put sin 7.0 times t. You can see the torus not appeared. Hit S to focus on it. We have the shape, but it's too jagged. To make it smooth, we have to increase the samples count. I will set this to 1000 for better result. Now it's looking nice and clean. I'll put this under the sweep generator along with the end side for better visibility. Looking better. The first part is done now. You can end the video here. But if you want to learn some new things, keep watching. It will be fun. You can adjust variables like major radius or minor radius. You have to go into these formula fields, remove the previous values, and put new ones. You will have a different look. But the main problem is it's not so intuitive. That's why I wanted to make custom user data and dynamically link those variables into those formula fields. Click on this user data option and add user data. You will get this manage user data pop-up. Delete the default data. Then click on add group option to add a group. And we can name this torus knot. Select this torus knot group and add new data. Rename this to uppercase R for major radius. Change the unit type from percent to length unit. And we can set the default value to 4. Again, select the torus group and add new data. Change the name to lowercase r for minor radius. Set the default value to 2. Repeat the steps two more times for variables P and Q. And when you're done, click OK. I'll quickly save the project. Now, if you click on the User Data tab, you can see we have our custom data fields. But changing these values does absolutely nothing. That's because these variables are not linked to those formulas. We have to somehow create a link, and there's no direct way to do that. 
There's only one way to dynamically link those variables with the formulas by using Expresso and three lines of Python. So let's see how to do that. It's easy as fish. Right-click on the formula spline object, go to Programming Tags, and select Expresso. Drag the formula spline here and resize it for better viewing. Select the spline in the Object Manager and start dragging all the variables to the right side of the formula node. The right side is the output side. Look for the Python node and add that as well. Resize this node. Click on the blue corner of this node and add two more float inputs. Our variables are also float type, and that's why we need float inputs. Now, connect these together. Right-click on each of these inputs and change their names, same as the variables, from the formula node. You don't have to do this, but you'll get confused if you just use input 1, input 2 while programming. That's why it's better to rename those for clarity. Delete this output node. Now, add three outputs of string type, and I'll rename these to XT, YT, and ZT. We want the output to be a string, and we will feed that directly to the formula fields of the formula spline. Drag the formula spline again along with the three input fields. Connect them together. You can see that the Python node is highlighted with yellow color. It's giving warnings. Now we have to do some programming to fix it. It's easy, so don't quit now. Open the Python editor and scale it up. Remove all these lines of code. Type global, xt, yt, and zt. We are declaring these as global variables so that their values are accessible outside of the function. In the second line, write xt equals double quotes, open parenthesis plus str, then we put our major radius variable. str is a function we are using to convert float values to a string because we want a string to output in the end. Again, type plus then double quotes, put the plus symbol inside for addition, plus str with lowercase r. Double quotes multiply costs. Opening parenthesis plus str with q, plus double quotes times t and close parenthesis. Times cos and open parenthesis, plus str with p, plus double quotes times t and close parenthesis. I forgot to add plus symbol here. Click on the Compile button, and you can see our formula appears in X field of the formula spline. Now, this time, we are dynamically putting our custom user data values into the formula. Copy and paste this, and change the variable to YT. Also change the last cost to scene. Now write the code for ZT as well, like I'm doing. I'm sure by now you got the idea of it. Compile the code and you can see we have everything. Close all this. Go to your created user data. And now if you change these values, you will change the spline shape. And it's so fun and intuitive. You can generate so many different shapes without going and changing anything in the formula fields. Just look at this. I'm having fun with this now. Imagine the possibilities of what you can do with this technique. Also, if you want to add more depth to this shape, then do this. Modify the ZT variable like this. Just add the minor radius in the beginning. This will give more depth in the Z axis. Close everything, and you can see that it has more depth now. I hope you like this video tutorial. I tried to keep it short and informative so that you don't have to sit for hours. I'm sure you got to learn something cool. You can apply this technique to make your own tools and projects. Possibilities are endless.
If you have any doubts, let me know in the comments. Also, you can see that the sweep object is breaking here. It's not continuous. There is a fix for that. Once you're happy with the spline shape, make a copy of it. Hit C to make it editable. Delete the tag. Go to the object option and check the close spline. You can see some weird geometries. To fix that, change the spline type from linear to B spline. Now it's a perfect continuous shape without any breaks. So that's all for now. If you want the project file to play with, you can find it on my Patreon. The link is in the description. You can take a membership, and that will support me a lot. Currently, there are no paid members. So let's see who's going to be the first one. Or you can just like this video and subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Instagram as well. I post a lot of 3D renders and personal works there that I usually don't post on YouTube. You can text me there as well if you have any doubts. I'll see you later with a new tutorial very soon.